Mary Penizzi, do you think Chanel will ever sell online? Thank you, by the way, for your perspective and historical mentoring. Oh, thank you so much, Mary. I, I, I do think that they will. I have spoken to a lady um, last year. It was somewhere between autumn and winter. This lady, who shall remain unnamed, uh, was working um, for two years on a project that Chanel was... Um, hired her to a team of people to prepare for the launch of online sales. Clothing included and accessories, uh, which hasn't happened yet. Uh, but we did see this official announcement from Chanel. Remember you guys like two years ago or a year ago when they said they're going to unite forces with Farfetch just to ex enhance the experience of in boutique shopping and we were all asking ourselves I even made a video on that by the way you can check it out on, on my youtube channel it was like two years ago i think gosh how time flies um and they were talking about like yeah so um enhancing their online experience and making it easier for clients to i i don't know what to tell you because i haven't seen the results the effects of this yet because all the research that i do is on their website online and then if i have a question i call my sales associate and then we kind of go from there i either send them a photo of something that i like or they I don't know, or they propose something to me because they know kind of more or less my taste and they can tell me, oh, Jacob, this is coming. Would this be interesting for you? Usually it never is. Rarely. Sometimes it is, though, because I was so, actually the one time that it really happened was with the velvet, uh, the 255. But this is a classic size, but the um, this is a double flap. The single flap mini in blue velvet, which is the, like the last thing I bought right before the lockdown. Uh, you could check the video of that one as well. Uh, and there is one more bag I'm hunting, but I'm not going to talk about that. And I'm just fingers crossed that I get it before this increase. But anyway, but this has been one year coming for that other bag. But uh, um, online sales, I think it's coming. But to be perfectly frank with you guys, what I love, what I have loved until now about Chanel so much is that they don't sell online. Yes, in some countries they sell their sunglasses online. Yes, perfumes online. Fine clothes and and accessories i know sunglasses are accessories but forget sunglasses they're produced by luxottica it's a totally different thing their main fashion statement you know it's clothing shoes bags and costume jewelry i love the fact that that's not available online i think it's so noble to just keep it in the stores yes i know you're going to say but some people don't live next to a boutique how are they going to but you have opportunities, you have options. You can check what they have online on their website. You can call a boutique. You can talk to a sales associate that there's ways of paying stuff and then getting it shipped to you. But I remember when Louis Vuitton started their online shop, I think I, right away I ordered something. I was so disappointed with the whole experience. I hated it. I really didn't want to do it. And I think I did it only twice altogether. I think the second time, I had to do it because no store would have what I wanted, but dreadful. And ah, yes, yes, it actually, yes, two times. Um, oh gosh, I remember. Oh, that was dreadful. So <laughs> the second time I had to send it back, I ordered a mini, like it was like, um, what are they called? You see, I, I haven't been dealing with Louis Vuitton for such a long time. So it was the mini... keep all but you can imagine the audrey hepburn size which was invented for hers like the 25 i think and this was the mini it was like this small but the can so i ordered it it arrived made in france but the canvas was tilted you know the the letters weren't really aligned so you know it goes like up and down and then upside down and then when when they're stitched together here where the zipper is they should be they were like off and i was like oh god yeah it's a microscopic bag to begin with. And if you have this huge error, and then, you know, I started hearing these rumors. Ah, oh, yeah, but you know, what they do a lot, what this brand does a lot with their, with their uh, online sales, those are kind of the mistakes. Like those pieces, because in the boutique, you can't mess with people. This is the thing. Luxury, you got to touch it. You got to feel it. You got to know what it is. You know, it's a part of luxury and a part of the, these high prices is also the experience within the boutique. Granted, the sales associate has to be really cool. 
because they have to be really nice, knowledgeable, patient with you, and they have to have the right demeanor and everything because otherwise it's a terrible experience. If the first thing that it happens to you when you enter a boutique and they first like scan you like up and down like mm -hmm. you're like okay my experience is done i feel terrible from the beginning from the get-go so but if 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 the cards <laughs> are all played right and you do get a wonderful person helping you th through your shopping experience uh, and you're also polite and pleasant to deal with as well because you got to play your part too it can be a wonderful experience and then you get to touch all of these products and see them and, and feel them. And that's part of luxury. That's part of the reason why you pay so much is because also, this is how it's supposed to be, at least, these people that work there should be paid really well. Some cases they are, in some cases they're not. But so part of the reason why you're paying these bigger prices should also be because these people are paid fairly, because these products are produced under fair conditions, not somewhere in Asia where labor is dirt cheap and people are literally enslaved to work. So this also contributes to, you know, you're supporting local economy. And I always say it. Yes, if we all supported local economy, so sooner or later, the prices would go down. They wouldn't be so high because more of it would be made and more would be possible. But somebody has to make the first step. So luxury, right? We're paying for the experience in the boutique, for the sales associates to be paid properly. We're paying for the manufacturing to stay within really controlled environments where people are paid properly, where the workers and, and the factories are paid properly. We're also paying for the marketing and for the fashion shows, the beautiful shows that look like fairy tales that cost millions of dollars. We're paying for that too when we but we buy in we buy into a dream. And it's okay. So if you kill all of that and you just say, well we're just selling we're not going to do fashion shows anymore. We're just going to sell online. And then people of course you can't touch it in the store. You're not in the store anymore. So you order this really expensive bag it comes home to you. You don't know if another 10 people ordered it before you did and sent it back because for whatever reason and touched it and did whatever they did with it. And then you receive it as the 10th person. And you're like, what is this? It looks used. <laughs> and this is, this is the fear I have when luxury hits online retail, you see? This is the fear I have. And this is why I think it's so noble that Chanel did not go that route yet. But things might change because if their sales start dwindling, they're going to they're gonna look for different ways to, to make more money, you know. Daniel says, Chanel clothes, even off the rack, should fit perfectly. How does that happen with online buying? You can forget it. it. It ain't happening. And in fact, Chanel is all about the tailoring. It's all about the fit. And they actually pride themselves. Well, in the past, they used to pride themselves. When you go into the boutique, they love to alter things for you, you know, because obviously, sure, you can buy off the rack, but... If they make a range of sizes, you might be in between sizes. So, of course, you know, and every person is made differently. I mean, this is not haute couture. So for haute couture, of course, I mean, some people have shorter arms, longer arms, shoulders, everything. But even within the Prêt-à-Porter range that you buy off the rack in the boutiques, they have all these seamstresses in the back rooms and the door. It's so beautiful to see how these ladies appear from nowhere and they can just like all of a sudden they're like, you know, fixing stuff here, length here. They, we could alter this. We could make this wider for you. This too, this shorter, tick, 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 you know? I love that. I love that time that it also takes to, to prepare this piece for you, to make it just right for you. You know, the things are not so immediate like now. And I love to fight for things as well. And with Chanel, God knows I had my share of fights. It's nothing is easy. Nothing is easy. Not even buying a freaking brooch is easy. Even like this one was a hunt. It took half a year. But I, I kind of love it. It's it's work that I, as I said, also with thrifting, uh, you know, thrift shopping, uh, secondhand shop, vintage shopping. It, it's the hunt that's really half of that pleasure. And then once you have the piece, you, you enjoy it even more because it wasn't a quick buy. It was something that you thought through, that you worked for, that you worked for literally to earn the money to be able to pay it first. But second, you worked for it also time-wise because you analyzed it. You understood why you really wanted it or needed it or both. And uh, that makes you appreciate it more. It makes you never feel like it's getting old for you, that you're getting bored of it. Never. I mean, at least I never do. But I'm very, very selective and picky with the pieces that I that I purchase. Thank you guys so much for watching, for tuning in. Um, if you haven't already, but wish to, consider subscribing to this goddamn channel here on the YouTubes. Super Jacob also all spelled together on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And by the way, for the, and for the occasion... For the occasion. Yeah, for the occasion. I would like to thank all my patrons for helping, sustaining the channel, keeping it alive, because it really means the world to me. 
especially in these trying and hard times. Um, you know, I think that in general, something that has never changed throughout history are the patrons of the arts. There's always somebody out there who wishes to sustain artists in their endeavors to find new ways to express what, because artists, we have, we are mirrors. What we do is what art should be is you lift a mirror to society and you show the reflection of the society, of the societal norms of whoever's looking at you in that moment and you're reflecting it back. And there's always somebody who wishes to support that just to keep awake and aware society of the fact that they should never take for granted who they are, where they stand and what they do. And they should always be prepared and ready to see themselves in the face. Because if they're not ready to see themselves in the face, that means that morally something is wrong in that society. And that's why art is so important. And that's why artists are so important. Thank you guys so much for watching. Never forget to never give up on love. Until next time, see you all soon. Love you. Take care. Bye.